that's lost in darkness, for the saint who's gone astray, for the sinner blind and searching, for the child in need of faith, for the homeless and forsaken, for the hungry and the cold, for the prisoner and the captive, for the young and for the old. There is a remedy. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you in the service tonight. It's good to have you with us. Those that are visiting, we'd like to give you a hearty welcome to our gospel service this evening. And we trust that each one that has come out this evening will be blessed. And most of all, may we hear of some one of ones coming to know Christ as their Savior this evening as a result of our service being conducted. Let us rise as we sing number 72 in the Redemption Songbook. Number 72, we sing the praise of him who died, of him who died upon the cross. The sinner's hope, though men derive, for this we count the world but lost. Number 72, let us rise as we sing. <clears throat>
you for your good singing. At this time, let us go to the throne of grace and ask God's blessing on the coming together this evening. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful this evening for your love towards us throughout another day. <clears throat> we thank thee for the way that you've been with each one of us. Kept us safe, kept us healthy, whereby I'll be able to be here this evening. Lord, we pray for the gospel message as it goes forth once again this evening. Here in the chapel and also in the other churches in our land, throughout the Bahamas and throughout the world, may it be, the blessed, may it be to the salvation of many, many precious souls. Lord, we pray for those that may be in this service this evening that know you not as Savior, those that may be in a backslidden condition, we pray for each one this evening. We pray that as Brother Joe comes in a little while to present the gospel message, that the Holy Spirit will be very real in our midst this evening, and that those that are in the service, Lord, may they realize that the day of grace is fast coming to a close, and how sad it will be if you should, if you should come back for your church even before this service comes to a close. What a sad picture would be left in Spanish wells. So many of our loved ones and family members would be left behind to go to lost eternity. Father, we pray for the rest of the meetings during this week, the following week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in your will. Pray that you will be with each one, Lord, and pray that the Holy Spirit may be very real in our midst each night as we meet to present the word of God. Pray for those that are not well physically. Pray that you will be with each one of these. Pray for your people, Lord, especially that are not doing well. Many that are just had surgery, think of Brother Keddy again, that has so much pain. Pray that you'll be with him, Lord, and ease his pain at this time. Sister Gloria there in Nassau, and many, many others of your people that need your help physically. Pray for each one at this time. Pray that you would if it be your will that you would see fit to heal and restore them back to their health and strength again, we pray. Thank you most of all this evening, Lord Jesus, for the fact that you are so willing to leave the splendors of heaven, to come to this earth of ours and there let men nail you upon a tree and there suspended between heaven and earth in those three hours of darkness, the one who knew no sin was made sin for us, that we could have life and have it more abundantly. We pray this evening that each one in this service, before they leave, will be able to say that they have this life and have it more abundantly. The take for us now as we continue in this service, for it's in your worthy and precious name, we give thanks. Amen. <laughs> At this time, we're going to call on Solo to come sing for us, Peace Speaker. He said 
with the power of this friend by simply saying peace be still he can calm the strongest way that's why I never worry when storm clouds come my way know that he is near to drive away my fears and I just smile and say I know the peace speaker I know him by name I know the peace speaker Rolls the wind and waves when he says peace be still oh they have to obey I'm glad I know the peace speaker I know him by name Thank you very much for that beautiful solo, Darlene, the peacemaker. Right now, we're going to call in the choir for their last selection. That it seemed I faced alone Wondering why God left me here To struggle on my own I thought of all the verses And the scriptures I had read How he promised to be with me How he never would forsake me so with all the faith within me, I cried out to God and said, You were there, you were there, for Joseph, you were there, for David, when he didn't have a prayer. That through it all, you were there for me. Oh, there'll be days of silent suffering when it seems that no one cares. Years may come and go without an answer to my prayers. But may I never question your unfailing love for me. And like the saints who've gone before me, may my faith 
me one more story of a life that's lived for your glory so that others will believe in you were there oh Moses you were there oh Joseph you were there for David when he didn't have a prayer you were there for Stephen so I and I are going to sing a selection now that we haven't sung for a long time. It's a very solemn piece and I would ask that you not clap after we finish singing this song and after we finish, this, finish singing, this, singing this song of Brother Joe, the come of the word of God this evening. It's entitled, Sorry I Never Knew You. Sorry, I never knew you depart from me forevermore. Sorry, I never knew you go and serve the one that you serve. Last night, as I lay sleeping, a dream came to me. I dreamed about the end of time, about eternity. I saw a million people fall on their faces to pray. But the Savior sadly shook his head, and this I heard him say. Sorry, I never knew you depart from me Say 
I thought the time had come when I would stand the trial. I told the Lord I've been a Christian all my life. But as he turned to the pages of the big book, he sadly shook his head. He placed me over on his left, and this is what he said. Sorry, I never knew you. I find no record of your birth. Go and serve the one you served while on earth. Then I saw my wife and baby rejoicing, dressed in robes of purest white, with crowns upon their heads. My little girl looked up to me, and this is what she said. Daddy, we can't go with you. We must stay on this beautiful shore. Sorry, Daddy. We still love you, but you can't be our daddy anymore. Go, go and serve the one that you served before. And then, as I awakened with tears in my eyes, I looked around about me and to my great surprise I saw my wife and baby I knew I'd had a dream so then upon my knees I fell and for mercy did scream Father on me today. Forgive me and let me serve you till the summons comes and calls me away. Till the summons comes and calls me Lord Jesus Christ has divided this world into two camps, two families, two teams, two masters, and only two. There are no gray areas. Tonight, you're either in the family of God or you are in the family of the devil himself. Please, and turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 8. John's Gospel and chapter 8. While you're turning, I want you to consider these thoughts. You're either on your way to heaven tonight or you're on your way to hell tonight. You either have been saved by the grace of God or you have not. Only two families. One family has God as their father. The other family has Satan as their father. I want to give you the shocking introduction before I give you the statement that the Lord Jesus has made. He has been speaking, I want you to read with me in verse number 30 of John chapter 8. After he has delivered his message, I want you to notice in verse 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him. 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 38, Jesus said, I speak that which I have seen with my Father, and you do that which you have seen with your Father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, if you, were the, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. 
But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. And they say to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my words. You are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. <clears throat> if I were to say to you tonight, unless you have been to Calvary, seen yourself as a sinner, and Jesus Christ is your only hope, your only Savior, and admitted to him that you were lost, and reached out by faith and by grace and trusted Christ as your Savior, your substitute. He died for you. He was buried. He rose again. And if you have never put your faith in Jesus Christ, please listen to me. You are of your father, the devil. You say, well, I, that's your opinion. I, uh, I don't believe that. That's what they said to Jesus that day. He said, because you don't believe me when I tell you the truth. I don't know of a more frightening passage than those who said they believed. Did you get it? Look in verse 30. He spake these words and many believed. Verse 31, then Jesus said to those which believed on him, those who Jews which believed on him, the audience to which he addresses this statement are those who believed on him. That's incredible to me. He preaches. Many believe. Then he says to the Jews that believe, if you continue in my word, you're real disciples. I tell you that is frightening to me and it ought to be frightening to anyone who said they believe, but they did not continue. It is to those people that Jesus makes this statement, you are of your father, the devil. Is there a belief in vain? Absolutely. Are there false professions? Absolutely. Tonight I want to give you the characteristic of the devil and the characteristics of God. Now, you will understand that in a moment of time, I, I wouldn't be capable if I had years to do this, but in a moment of time, we will just skip as a rock across the surface. But let me share with you some thoughts about the character of the devil himself. First of all, he was a created being. Son of the morning was his name, Lucifer. The Bible says he was beautiful in all of his ways, wise in all of his ways, but could I add, proud in all of his ways. He became, listen to the names, Satan, serpent, old dragon, the devil, the prince of the air, God of this world, everything that is opposed to God. He can come like an angel of light. He's called the evil one, the angel of the bottomless pit, Apollyon, Abaddon, Belial, and Beelzebub, and perhaps others that I've missed. He was a murderer from the beginning, a father of lies. He abides not in the truth. He walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He goes to and fro upon the earth. He is the oppressor of the righteous. 
He hinders the gospel. He's the bird of the night that steals away the good seed of God's word. He is the accuser of the brethren. He desires to sift you as wheat. He is the devil that deceived the nations. The wiles of the devil we are to be aware of and not be ignorant of his devices. He is limited even though he is a powerful spirit being. He has great power, but not all power. He has great knowledge, but not all knowledge. He may move with the speed of light, but he is not omnipresent. And he can never defeat God. A brief sketch of the character of your Father, which is in heaven, if you're saved tonight. He is eternal. The great I am. Not I was, not I'm going to be, but the eternal I am. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. In the beginning, God. <coughs> Alpha and Omega, first and last. God is love. God is holy. God is righteous. God is just. God is merciful. He is a forgiver of sins, a giver of life, the father of truth, the God of all comfort. God is light, the one from whom all good and perfect things come. He cannot lie. He is unchangeable. He cannot sin. He always does the right thing, and he does all things well. He goes about doing good, not willing that any should perish, and not limited. He is all present. He is all knowledge. He is all powerful, and there is none greater than him. The two camps. The two teams, the two fathers. Now for a moment, I want you to consider if God is not your father tonight, if you've never been to Calvary, if God is not your father, I want you to consider with me for a moment your relationship to your father, the devil. Now remember who the audience is. In John chapter 8, the audience of the Jews that believed. He said, unless you continue in the truth, you're not my disciple. You say, now, Brother Joe, does that mean we're working our way to heaven? Absolutely not. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but by his mercy has he saved us. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Well, what is this continuing? It's the evidence. It is the evidence. You see, if you're truly saved, you're going to truly continue. And the Lord Jesus now addresses those Jews which say they believed, but obviously in the conversation, they're not believing. Oh, they believe for a while. Oh, they believe when it wasn't hard. Oh, they, they believe when it fit into their religion. But when the Lord Jesus started talking about bondage and being set free, they said, we've never been in bondage to any man. He said, oh, yeah. If you were Abraham's seed, you would know what I'm talking about. You know what they said to him? We know who our father is. What an accusation. What an accusation. We be not born of fornication, they said to him. We know who our father is. You see, that stigma of Mary becoming pregnant before she and Joseph were married followed him through his whole life. We're not like you. We know that Abraham's our father. He said, if Abraham was your father, you would love me. Dear friend, tonight there is evidence if God is your father. If God is your father, you're going to love Jesus. If God is your father, you're going to do what's right. If God is your father, when you fall, you get up, you repent, you say, I, I'm sorry, you confess and you make it right. And when you make excuses, it just may be evidence that God is not your father at all. But that your, your father is none other than the devil. Now let's think for a moment. 
if, uh, if your father is the devil, let's notice a few things about your relationship to your father. The first thing I want you to notice is this. If, if the devil is your father, you've been bought with a lie. It was right in the garden. The serpent beguiled. The serpent uh, deceived. The serpent lied. And Eve and Adam were bought with a lie that day. What was the lie? Oh, God has lied to you. You're not going to die if you eat the fruit. God has lied to you. He doesn't love you. God knows that if you eat of that fruit, you'll be like God. Did you ever notice that the first temptation was to be godly, not to be ungodly? Oh, you will be like God. And God doesn't want you to be like Him. He's a mean, selfish God. Oh, quite the opposite, friend. Everything that God has designed, we were created in His image. And that image may be marred by sin, but through Jesus Christ, you can get that image back again. You can be like Christ. That is God's great plan for you to be conformed to the image of His Son. But tonight, without Christ, the devil is your father. You were bought with a lie. Uh, secondly, you were blinded by His power. The scriptures are very clear in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 that the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. I, I, it, it seems so ridiculous to a Christian because we have eyes to see. But for the unsaved, they don't have eyes to see. The devil has blinded their minds and their hearts and their eyes and they cannot understand the truth. Not only were you bought with a lie, but you were blinded by his power. Uh, number three, you're kept by his power. What power is that? That's the power of sin and darkness. That is the power of an evil force over you. Uh, not, not only are you kept by his power, you are energized by his power. He is so deceiving. He is such a liar. He is such a sneak. Let me say to you, you think you're going about your own life, rowing your own boat, doing your own thing, determining your own destiny. Let me tell you, good luck on that because the devil's hiding in the corner and he's smirking the whole way. He has blinded you. He has bought you. And he is energizing you because you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air. You don't have a life. You're nothing more than a pawn. And he's deceived you. And you're in his family. And you don't even know it. The Bible is very clear. You are unconscious of your state and your position. Listen to these words from 1 John 5. It says, the whole world lies in wickedness. You do a little research and find out just how that's translated into today's application. And it goes something like this. The whole world is rocked to sleep in the arms of Satan. Oh, dear friend, tonight I'll tell you he's a sneaky old fox. He is. And he's deceived the nations. Listen, he is called your father. We read it in John 8 and 44. And the end of the whole thing is this. You will be with your father forever. I can prove it to you. Listen to the word of God. He that believeth not is condemned already. You see, we're born into this world on the broad road. We're born into this world sinners separated from God. We're born into this world because as one man uh, entered into this world, sin came by one man and death came by sin. So death is passed unto all men, and that all have sinned. There is nobody in this room tonight that would be so bold to say, I have never sinned. I don't believe there'd be anybody that would say, I have never sinned. I've never broken one of God's laws. You know, James puts it like this to show you how serious it is. He said, if we keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, we're guilty of all. You say, what does that mean? That means that if you break one of God's laws, it's just like breaking all of them. You say, well, I don't understand that. What's that? Well, God had 613 commandments, statutes, ordinances, and judgments in the Old Testament that he gave to Israel. That was his law. And that law was boiled down into 10. 
Let's suppose for a moment that you kept all of the Ten Commandments and you broke one. James said if you break one, you've broken them all. You say, I don't understand that. Don't make it hard. Let's suppose you're hanging over a fire by a chain of ten links. And each one of those links represent one of the Ten Commandments. How many links would have to break before you fall into the fire? Folks, the Bible is always true. And let me say, God is in heaven and He's perfect. You're on earth and you are not. And, and, and unless you are perfect, you're never going to get to heaven. And you say, well, you think you're perfect, Brother Joe? Uh, not on earth, I know that. But I'll tell you at that day, by the grace of God, when I trusted Christ as my Savior, are you listening to me? I changed teams. I changed families. Oh, not me, not in my effort, not in my own strength, I didn't. But by the grace of God, I was taken out of my old position, which was in Adam, sinful and separated from God, and placed into my new position, which is in Christ. Adam and the devil was my family before. Now it's God and Christ is my family. Now I'm in a different family. And as far as God is concerned, I am ready for heaven tonight. By grace, by mercy, by faith. Not by myself, not by works of righteousness which I have done. But the end of those who will refuse the truth, they won't believe because they hear the truth. The end of those is to spend eternity with your father. Let me tell you where your father is going. Revelation puts it like this. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Later in that same chapter, we read these words, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Please listen to me. Hell was prepared. Not for you. Hell was not prepared for you. I believe it breaks God's heart every time a Christ-rejecting sinner has to go to hell. I believe it breaks his heart. He's not willing that any should perish. That is not the place he's prepared for you. Oh, dear friend, let me tell you, if you go to hell, if you father, follow your father uh, to hell, let me tell you, don't you go blaming it on God. Don't you go blaming it on your wife or your husband or your parents or your children or your friend or your church. You just say, I hardened my heart. I, I stiffened my neck. I gritted my teeth and I said, I will not. And God says, then I have no place for you. You will have to go to the place that is prepared for the devil and his angels, the lake of fire. Now let me give you the other side of the coin. If your father is in heaven, if God is your Father, if you've been to Calvary and you by faith have trusted Christ, please listen to me. You're not bought with a lie. You're bought with blood. You see, the Bible is very clear that heaven paid the highest price that it could afford. The lovely Son of God left the ivory palaces of heaven and came down to a world of sin and woe. And listen, if we took every person in this auditorium tonight and took them out of here except you, I got to preach the same message. <laughs> There's no other way. It's the price of blood. Don't you know that you're redeemed? Not, not by silver and not by gold and not by the traditions of man, but by blood, the precious blood blood of Christ. The devil buys you with a, the devil bought you with a lie. And God said, I buy with blood. I give my life, the, the blood of my life, uh, of my son's life for you. I have bought you with a price that is more precious than anything else. Number two, uh, not, not only were we bought with blood, but uh, the, the, the devil wants to blind the minds of those that believe not. God says, I want to open your eyes. I want you to know. Listen to what the commission was that he gave to Paul when he got saved. He said, go and preach. And when you preach, open their eyes to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. Listen, God wants you to know that he's prayed to, paid the highest price he could. He wants you to know where you are. He wants you to know what you've done. He wants your eyes to be open. And the only way your eyes can be open, please listen to me, is by faith. 
By faith. At some point, at some time, you've got to take a step. You've got to say, I'm wrong, God's right. You've got to say, He is the Savior and there is no other. You've got to say, my sin is separating me from God and I'm going to take a step of faith. Faith is what? Believing what God said. Not only bought with blood, not only God wants to open our eyes, the devil wants to keep us by his power in sin and darkness. And God said, I want to keep you safe by my power. Listen to this, that we've been uh, born again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for those who are, listen to me, kept by the power of God. Listen, we can't save ourselves, but we can reach out by faith and God will save us. We can't keep ourselves. But I'll tell you what the Lord Jesus said. He said, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Um, uh, and, and the Father which gave them to me, nobody's able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. My Father is greater than all. And nobody can pluck them out of our hand. Listen, the hand of the Lord Jesus and the hand of God the Father. And there you are right there. You are kept by the very power of God. The devil wants to energize you. He works in you. Listen to what God does. He energizes you. His very spirit comes into your life. And it's God who works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The devil wants you to be unconscious of your state. God wants you to be conscious of your state. He wants you to know that if you have the Son, you have life. If you don't have the Son, you don't have life. He writes to those who have trusted His Son so that they might know that they have eternal life. Uh, Satan is called uh, your father, the devil himself, and God is called your father. Listen to the words of the Lord Jesus. He said, I go to my Father and to your Father and to my God and your God. The end of the whole thing with Satan is you get to go with him for all of eternity. Guess what the end is with your Father who is in heaven? Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus said. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again that where I am, there you may be also. How is he going and where is he going? He's going by the cross first. He goes to make the way. And when he opens the way up, there's a pathway to God through Christ, through the cross. He's the only way. And he takes you to the Father. Did you know that you cannot get to heaven from Spanish well? I'm sorry to tell you, folks, you cannot do it. There's some place else you have to go first, and the, and the place is called Calvary. You've got to go to Calvary first. And then by grace and through faith, the Lord Jesus, who receives sinners, makes you right before a holy God, and you go to spend eternity with God. The Lord Jesus would put it like this through the, uh, through the prophet, he would say, one day Jesus is coming. The Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the cloud. So shall we meet the Lord in the air and ever be with the Lord. Listen, wherefore comfort one another with these words. I can't believe there'd be anybody that, that there's a rational thinker here tonight. I, I, I can't believe there'd be anybody that would say, well, I'm going to take my chances. Listen, Jesus said, you didn't believe me because I told you the truth. I didn't write the script, folks. I'm just reading it. You go home and read it. To those who said they believed. Oh, but when that belief wasn't uh, convenient and when that belief got too hard, Jesus said, it's those that continue. Could I ask you a question tonight? Have you made a profession of faith? Have you continued? Because if you haven't, he's speaking to you. That's who he's speaking to. He's speaking to you. 
to those Jews who did not continue. That's a dangerous place to be in. They mocked him. They scorned him. Listen to what he said. He said, you do what you have seen your father do. He said, you do the deeds of your father. And then he said, you are of your father. You claim to be a Christian here tonight and you're living like the devil? You're not a Christian. There's no evidence. Oh, you might have said it. But that's all, because you have not continued. It's about time somebody on this island started facing reality around here. It's about time, folks, that we started honoring the Lord. It's about time we quit calling ourselves Christians unless we're going to live like Christians. It's about time that God got a hold of somebody's life around here. No wonder sinners don't come to Christ. Because there are Christians out there who claim to be Christians who've never had a life change and they look at you and they say, I'm just as good as you. Something's got to happen. Something's got to break. Somebody's got to own it. Somebody's got to give up. Somebody's got to give in. Somebody's got to admit it's all phony. It's all fake. It's never been real. I've never had peace with God. I don't know where I, where I am or where I'm going. Tonight, come to Christ then. Come on. Trust Him. You say it's too embarrassing. It's going to be far more embarrassing one day. You got people here that love you, people that will pray for you, people that will encourage you. What's it going to take? I've heard of some tragedies that happened on this island. Is that what it's going to take? It's going to take another tragedy? Lives lost? Property lost? Hurricanes? Boat accident? What's it going to take? What do you want God to do? I tell you the truth and you won't believe it. It is the truth. Is anybody going to say, it's about time. Isn't somebody going to say, I'm tired of living like this? Isn't somebody going to say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I don't want to live the rest of my life like this. I want to get right with God. I want to be saved tonight. I want to come back tonight. I, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. I don't live on this island. I, I, I don't know how you act. I don't know what you do in secret. I don't know what you do when you go home with your wife and your children. But God does. God knows. Let's pray. Oh God. Would it be possible that someone would dare come down to the front of this auditorium tonight and admit that they have been wrong. Even in the quietness of this prayer, just get up out of their seat and just come down here and say to these people, pray for me. I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to walk with God. Would it be anyone, Lord? Is your spirit not working? Is there no conviction? Is no one listening? Are we going home to watch television tonight? Take a ride around the island? What will it take, God? What will it take? Oh, Father. In thy mercy, don't leave us to ourself, we pray. Please don't walk away. Don't leave us to our own devices. We, we have no hope. And we're trusting that your spirit will work in such a way that no one in this room will have to hear those words, Sorry, I don't know you. 
We're praying for a moving of thy spirit, Lord. We're praying for a breakthrough. We're praying for one soul to stand up and to come that will lead many to repentance for Christ's sake. Amen. This meeting is dismissed. I'm going to be down at the front. I'm going to ask you to quietly leave the auditorium tonight. And please pray if you're a Christian. And if you want to talk, I'll be here. We have other people to help. But please, seriously consider the claims of Jesus Christ on your life. You are dismissed.